She and played the okay, let's go music now. Oh my god. <laughs> okay, let's go. Okay, okay, <laughs> let's go. And we're back at it again. You know, uh, this is the Pakish podcast. Welcome back, welcome back. Uh, we have YJ and Vin here with us. Unfortunately, What's up? we don't have Amiral, our Malay brother. Right, so yeah, uh, lots to unpack for today. You know, um, yeah. today was a in rather eventful day. But before that, I think we need to give a shout out, right, to our 75 downloads. <laughs> <laughs> we just hit our 75 download mark. I think we've reached the peak. There's no going. The pinnacle, I mean, yeah. I don't think we can go any higher than this. I know 75, I mean, eh. We'll just maintain at this number. Everything else we do from now on is like zero. It's pretty good. Pretty good, yeah, yeah. This is our pinnacle. We've reached Joe Rogan's status. <laughs> yeah. In our, in our own heads. Quite happy with that. So I mean, I mean, yeah. So let's go chronologically, like, with what happened in the past week or so. Mm-hmm. You know, given mm-hmm. like what, well, any first thoughts? I I mean, like I I feel very overwhelmed, lah. Like. Suddenly, like all these news start coming in, right? Yeah, I mean, you- I guess it all started with that essential artist um, <laughs> controversy. I don't think it's much of a controversy. It's more of um, it's like Sunday Times try to pick a fight with with artists by posting that kind of thing. Mm. Um, yeah, so I mean, for those who, who don't know, I'm, I'm sure everyone kind of knows by now, like, so the Sunday Times, they posted a poll on what is what is considered an essential worker and a non-essential worker in Singapore. So they put, I think, a thousand people. So they just wanted to find out their, um, what they thought about it. And at the top of the non-essential jobs, these were artists in general, like, artists like so it was this guy with like a mario hat and like a scarf <laughs> yeah. is it <laughs> yeah oh, i didn't know which is like what nobody wears in singapore like i don't know what kind of depiction of an artist they have in their mind maybe they were shown a picture of super yeah. mario that's that's why i think maybe in the in the survey that they did <laughs> under artists that that was the picture next to it and then they were like huh Peter. we don't need this yeah. <laughs> not in this Who climate not in this weather <laughs> It's, it's terrible yeah. la, It's a terrible why are, they, why are they hating on artists Why are they hating on painters Yeah and then it, it drew some like Response from the Artist community In Singapore Like Oh without artists You you won't get this infographic You won't get the design Of this newspaper And people are mm. calling out All these like People who Who thought artists Were non-essential That What will you do Without Spotify Without Netflix You won't survive With this artist So I thought it was A uh, <laughs> funny way to kick off that Sunday um, with essential artists non-essential artists wait 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 do we do we count as artists then with our 75 downloads are you offended if you're offended then you're an artist yeah I, think- I was I was thoroughly <laughs> I was thoroughly offended I'm quite confused la. like why, why why are people so offended like because if you think about it right we we are in this weird place where we're just providing entertainment right to people and if you think about it in the context of of covid we're really not essential what <laughs> if, well, if yeah, it's a life saying and death situation now. yeah we are <laughs> artists I, I think if, if you talk about a life and death situation hmm. where you know you have to you're you're talking about survival right okay yes definitely you need doctors if, then you yeah. go after what's the next level after that you have more comfort you know you need to have your area around you clean so you got about cleaners you need to have yeah. food delivered to you then your delivery guys yeah I mean all these things are can be considered essential and then down the list you have how do you how do you spend your time you watch Netflix you spend your time on Spotify and things like that so who makes these contents you know and then you have the creative industry and yeah in the broad term these are artists right people who make content are artists mm. so you can argue whether that's essential or not what if what if there was no TV no Netflix would people be going mentally insane would they what would they be doing to spend their time i mean they'll probably find other other things to do uh, but it is as much an essential part of our lives now than anything else it's just in that survey it's just you're talking about i also don't see the point of the survey uh, so <laughs> <laughs> what what did they prove by by this like what is the most essential and what's yeah. the least essential we can I all like agree on that <laughs> Yeah, I feel like if you, they put any other job up there, right, then the people doing that job will also have an uproar, right? It's like mm. anyone's livelihood 
if that is their job, that's what they do all the time. And someone says you're not, your job is not essential, and then you'd be like, no, but essential is be- it's essential because of this, 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 all these reasons. Mm. Yeah, yeah. So, it's just funny seeing uh, a lot of people take to Facebook and like change their profile pictures to oh, non-essential yeah. worker with their face in the middle. Yeah, like <laughs> it's quite funny. Uh, I, I think I think it's quite uh, all the memes that come out of it. I like think some, that some, that uh, YouTuber Yolo, yeah, he made yeah. those. He made the Instagram um, filter. Yeah. So it's like, how yeah. essential are you? <laughs> that, <laughs> that whole like percentage thing. Exactly. Oh, oh, yeah, quite wait. Funny. First, let me clarify, right? That I'm not an artist. I'm a PR. So I'm number three in the list of non-essential. You are number one. <laughs> so I'm a little See, less. You can't even get number one on the list for these kinds yeah, of things, oh, Nigel. Fuck, I'm a loser. <laughs> I'm an unemployed PR professional. That's even worse. I don't consider fuck, myself man. an artist, so it's fine. I know I'm not offended. Oh, oh, oh <laughs> damn it. I'm a technician, I think. No, but I, from the way <laughs> I looked at it, right? Honestly, okay, if you take away cleaners, garbage uh, truck and doctors, right, we would crumble. If you take away artists now, right, in this current day and age, right, they'll just watch old movies. Lah. That's what I thought about. They'll just watch old, old content. Lah. <laughs> you, you don't have to create new content now. That's, 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 that's the most distilled form that I was thinking about. Like, if you take away artists, it, it won't matter. We actually, will still, actually, we'll still be entertained. Yeah, to be yeah. fair, I, I agree with that. But, you know, I think artists by nature are quite sensitive. Oh, um, hey, hey, hey. That's, that's controversial, man. You're going to well, get us cancelled. That's, that's <laughs> <laughs> For sure. No, let, let's, well, not, let's not bring that up Bye-bye bye to the 75 downloads yeah. after this. Yeah, like Vince said, we're just going to stagnate at 75. You, you do realise our listeners are all mostly artists, right? Because they are our friends. <laughs> Yeah, so they understand the, um, the 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 soul of an artist and how like fragile that ego can be sometimes. No, but I think it also stems from if you are doing creative work for people who don't understand creative work, yeah, that's also that's part true. of the the problem because that's what like like we face before like a lot of people face before in the industry where you do work and you try to justify this certain amount for your for your job and then they go like yep. oh but it's only just this it's just that what it's just editing or it's just doing this or just putting some stuff together but they totally disregard the amount of time and effort that goes into it so it's a it's a thing that has been good point uh, yeah. common uh, it's been common for a long time so yeah yeah uh, uh, even people talking about oh yeah government or big corporations approaching artists or musicians to do free a free gig for exposure or things yeah. like that you know it's it's something that has been disregarded for a long time so i guess by putting them on top of the list right now it's just another reason for yeah. people to be like yep again you know <laughs> as usual maybe it's a more of like a reverse psychology thing to get like artists on the on number one for one one point in history in singapore like artists can be <laughs> number one on the list that's the yeah, only time I, I saw a few accounts on social media uh bef- way before this whole essential artist thing came out um there were a few like um photographers who were talking about how uh, maybe F and B owners or or you know small business owners are approaching them to ask for free, free. Yeah, um, there were like I think photographers work. who volunteered to take photos for F and B establishments mm, for mm. free to help market them, which I think so actually it's a good cause. What I think artists style in the end in society is is still a very like supplementary role mm. in the world, like telic like. Although like um, finance and like banking, all these things do support the economy, but artists are kind of the things that make you enjoy life more. It will help mm. like bring you deeper into like what, what is life, all this philosophical stuff. And it has always taken a secondary role in society. I think especially in Asian society. So it's kind of no surprise that it was number one on the non-essential list. But I think that number one spot took a lot of people by surprise and it kind of bruised a few <gasps> egos. Not me. Speaking of which, right, do you think do you think influencers felt felt offended? What is their place in, in our society? <laughs> in our social medias? Interesting well, question <laughs> given to uh, this week's events. Yeah, maybe maybe you can talk about what happened. Um the, okay, I think the weeks leading up to today before the um, influencer controversy influencer glass door the whole like what's that um instagram account name again 
The food. Uh, an affair with food. So Influencer Glassdoor was this uh, Instagram account that came out in, I think the first post was in 21st May. And it basically shows, it, it, people, it allows people to post their, their, their thoughts on different influencers and whether they are nice to, to the people that they work with or, you know, they're terrible and how they like what the weird kings are <laughs> not kings but what are their weird eccentricities <laughs> that they have you know um uh-huh. it's interesting i mean they they don't some of the posts actually don't make an effort to hide who they're talking about <laughs> and in a, in in a world like this where word of mouth is um your your strongest uh marketing tool especially if you're just starting out as an influencer it's quite important and yeah, this this influencer glass door really shed a light on you know some of the people that you think are nice people <laughs> but actually are not. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think. Do, but I think, think one concern with that platform is just the authenticity of these reviews. Mm. Um, yeah, because some that's of them the, were definitely the like sounded a bit exaggerated. It really depends, right? On 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 your encounters with these people. Like if it, if if it wasn't pleasant, right? But it they are actually nice people. It's just that maybe that particular incident just rubbed you off the wrong way. Mm. Then you're bound to you you're bound to just post something mean and nasty about them, one, right? Yeah, I don't think it actually really reflects that person as a whole, but I probably just reflect that encounter as a as a that working relationship with an influencer. I, I see what you're saying is. If you have a negative encounter with someone, you're more likely to be vocal about it than if you had a positive experience. Exactly, yeah. Yep. So therefore, the post on, on the influencer glass door would tend to skew towards the negative experiences that they've had with the influencers. I get that, I think. I think, yeah, that's that's a fair point. I also don't see why they have to censor the names because that's the point of the <laughs> the website, right? I mean, it's the Just point of the... Maybe there's a the, premium <laughs> version. <laughs> yeah, maybe. <laughs> maybe, yeah, too. Because, I mean, obviously, more. some names are very obvious. Like, when I was looking through it, like, I knew some names. But then, if it's supposed to be reviewing the influencers to let people know about certain influencers, then if you're going to block the names out, it kind of goes against the point, right? I, I, think, some, I think the point of the account was for the account to get viral. Basically. So you, okay, so it's just for <laughs> them. The, for the owners of the account, basically. I mean, I think it's a good idea. It's, yeah. it's a good idea because that's the industry that we're in right now, right? Yeah. And then you look at these reviews to see which is the best influencer the person that is easy to work with also word of, word of mouth is very important but mm. yeah you got to take into consideration that the people starting the channel or the, the page are also out to make their page go viral uh, so they're going to be putting the most juicy stuff out there yeah <laughs> for, for the likes and the comments yeah. What if you see repeated posts about this particular person and different incidents? Then, then would your impression? There of are a few of change? those, I think. Yeah, there are a few of those, and I think that's when you tend to believe it when there's a mul- when there are multiple posts about one person. Mm. Uh, and then there's there are also some posts where people will just be like, "Oh, this post is so fake because it sounds like the influencer themselves posted it," just mm. to like like make themselves look better. I think there was one influencer that there was many multiple negative reviews on and then there was one good review and on that review there were like hundreds of comments saying that <laughs> this is fake like this can't be true like have had very negative experiences with us so like you think that in that sense you kind of believe that because if so many people are saying the same thing about the influencer then uh, yeah I guess I guess maybe he or she is hard to work with mm, yeah. yeah true true have you have you all met anyone right that you idolize or you know even maybe read about when you were young or heard about and then I actually got to meet them and maybe, you know, your perception of them changed. Was there anyone in particular? Like, you, it doesn't even have to be, you know, someone famous. It's just someone that you came across. I don't I mean, think I've met anyone that famous. Lo- for the local celebs, it was like, I think, okay, the lo- for the local celebs, it was, I think it was Gurmit Singh when I was younger. Ooh. I used to love PCK a lot. Oh. And then uh, I met him a few, like maybe twice. And then I, I did an internship at Mediacorp. Then I met him like once when I was doing the internship at Mediacorp. And he was the nicest guy. Like he was just really, didn't seem like he was a celebrity. He was just like chill, yeah. like just talking to everyone, you know. And like, he, he's our he Tom Hanks. <laughs> S3 Tom Hanks. Yeah. <laughs> he seemed like, a, yeah, he was like a really nice guy. And like, 
genuinely funny guy. Mm. So I think, yeah, he was one guy that I I watched growing up and after meeting him, I just felt like, okay, he's definitely like right. a good guy. Yeah. I think yeah. drawing back to my own experience, like I got to meet um, Fandi Ahmad. And oh, honestly, nice. right, wh- whatever you read about him, right, that he's the most generous person that you ever meet. Like it's true. Eh? And a lot of people say that that is why he sort of met some obstacles in his life because mm. he, he had some failed, you know, business investments, things like that because he was so trusting. And you you really do see that the first few minutes that you meet him because he he literally goes up to you and greets not greets but he he gets a he 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 takes some time from his schedule to actually get to know your name get to know a, a little bit about you mm. and he does that mm. for every single person and can you imagine at that time right he was even now he's still the greatest ever sportsman that that's lived in Singapore and whatever you read about him is really is what you get lah. He's 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 really the nicest person on earth. So you would yeah. think his influencer Glassdoor review would be all positive. <laughs> Definitely good. Yeah, yeah. Five yeah. out of Definitely five. Good. Maybe <laughs> maybe some of his players. Maybe some of his players will say that he's quite fierce, but he's really the abang of of, of Singapore football, and and you will respect that. So I received the hair dryer treatment from at F from star star star, <laughs> <A> star, <laughs> star star. <laughs> this guy, this guy's hair dryer treatment. <laughs> Included full of vul- vulgarities, <laughs> I couldn't take it anymore. But I, but I mean, that's awesome, lah! Yeah. Like meeting your childhood like hero, and then them yeah. just being way better than you even thought they would be. Yeah. I guess this brings us back to a question, right? Like, what what is an influencer's role, especially in today's, you know, uh, today's com- consumer world, where you rely on 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 people's reviews for things, for food, you know. F- do do you all actually value what an influencer brings to whatever you buy? I think so, yeah. I mean, if I see someone that I kind of, I follow or like admire in a way online and I see mm. them endorsing this product, I would definitely be interested in it and research more about it and mm. um, potentially buy it. But, and I think saying that like all these influencers has a have a responsibility to be honest about the way they talk about things and and kind of present the things they stand for i, I guess because of social media you feel like you know them you feel like you trust them because yeah. you know every single part of their life that they post but where has this responsibility come from is it it's their own responsibility or because like in their from their point of view is like if a company is paying you money to post something then I think it it rests on their own morals to say like if I'm a, if am I gonna post something with my honest review or post something because the company pay me money to post something about it so I need to post just a positive review or, on it oh, and that's where question. like that's where I find it hard to trust what is what I see on social media like even when I'm looking for reviews right I I do tend to after I watch I'm like oh yeah it's it's really good then after a while I think about it I'm like oh was it sponsored or was this like a biased review how and uh, there are a few youtubers that are really open about it like mkbhd he says it's a non-sponsored review at the start or he'll say that this review is sponsored but i'm giving you my honest opinion like he he would he would make that very clear but when it comes to instagram influencers i think that the area is kind of gray just reading the influencer glass door reviews you can tell like you know how many of them actually do what they're supposed to do or you know some of them are hard to work with but it's mm. also about them stating that right at the start when a company engages them, then they say like, I would only do uh, an honest review. So you can pay me, but you must allow me to give you an honest review because that's yeah. my brand. But that's what the influencer has to do for his or herself. But I think mm. a lot of influencers in Singapore don't have the balls to, to do that. To say wow, it's hey, my hey, brand. Hey. Influ- oh, some influencers don't have balls literally okay please <laughs> please have some respectful well, language it's I was listening to the you know the Dikosh podcast right uh, yeah. when he was on okay let's go and he was talking about the food king mm. Mm. and he said that when they were doing this prawn I think it was a prawn noodle review for this uh, uh, shop stall mm. they were they said we will only give you our honest review like we will, we will rate it from one to three stars and it's our honest review. But, mm. you know, there's, there's such a big YouTube channel that if you know that if you're going to be on that YouTube channel, your store is going to be famous. Uh, after At that. least one star. 
Yeah, but they gave it zero stars. Oh, really? <laughs> Shit. And the... Okay, I'm not sure where, where there's a bronze. I can't remember what store it was, but but the owner was like really angry uh, and, and didn't want to pay them to do the review. And like they were, he was making all this fuss about it and he was saying like, how can you give us zero stars? But they were like, yeah, but this is this is the contract that you got into. We said that we would you pay us to do the review and we will give you an honest review, whether it's mm-hmm. one star, zero star, one star, two star, or three stars. Oh, I think they gave him one star and then they were, they, they weren't happy about it. Even mm-hmm. though they were saying one star is pretty good for our, our rating system. <laughs> Yeah. And then at the end of it, uh, I think it was like Sylvia went up to them and just said like, and just tore the check and said like, you know, fine. If you not, if you don't want to pay us, we don't want, we won't post it. And they just like left. So, but in order to reach that level, it's, you need to have the backing of enough money and success to know that whatever your next review is, doesn't matter. Or even if you don't, you just need to, it's hard, right? If you have to pay the bills and you have to have all these people under you that you have to support and to stand by your ground so much and like be so firm with it and say like I'm not gonna accept money from you then if you know if it's not my way Mm. it's hard I think it's like it's definitely tough but of course the more successful you are the easier it gets to do stuff like that yeah and you definitely still have to respect that they were able to do that Um, but I I, I wouldn't say that's for a lot of influencers in I mean in general I think like especially Instagram influencers I, I don't think they are the the cream of the crop in like what do you mean by influencing. that <laughs> what do you mean by that <laughs> Nigel's okay, offended like, now yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> shit Nigel's a resident like IG influencer yeah. so like, you know like I don't know how many types of influencers are there but I kind of only can well you can about, watch like, some Chen Hao videos to find out <laughs> <Jeez>. <laughs> Yo, okay you cannot you cannot respect their craft or you cannot respect the hard work that they put okay, in. Okay, now I'm bringing comparison between like a uh, Instagram influencer uh-huh. that got their fame on Instagram versus a YouTube okay. influencer. So, what, what, so yeah. I think that for Instagram influencers, I feel there are a lot of things that are covered up behind the scenes for uh, Instagram IG influencer because they, they deal in mostly pictures and posts and captions and everything. But mm. for me personally, I think a lot of YouTubers, they gain a lot of trust from their videos because it's a lot more difficult to hide things also. Like they do a lot of different content about vlogs, about their day skits and reviews and things like that. So you see that and you can tell a lot more about that person from the video they make compared to just like a, a photo or a picture you see on an Instagram influencer. So if there was the same product or same category of product and I saw an Instagrammer, a sponsored ad by Instagrammer versus a sponsored ad by a YouTuber, I'd probably go with a YouTuber because I, I just feel it's that easier I wouldn't to, really... to lie in a picture, is it? Is, is it <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know. It's easier to get away with a picture. Have you heard of versus... deepfakes? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think okay, everyone, a lot of people, has, I don't think a lot of people have access to deepfakes yet or know how to do it. But have you heard of Photoshop also? I mean, look at... No, look okay, at, yeah. I, okay, I get it, I get it. But let me pose this question to you, okay? If, say you are you are an Instagram influencer who actually organically grew his, his or her audience um, with relatable posts, not, in, not, not just nice photos, but actually they thought through each post yeah. and there were people that actually identified with with, with this these posts and they actually grew their their audience like mm. in this way and then because you hear about the bad apples right this changes your 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 perception of them yeah i, I agree I, that yeah. is, I think when people think about instagram influencers they just think about i think if i say infre- instagram influencer you have one person come up like mm. i don't know who it is but i think that person is probably just like a pretty face mm. on like instagram like all these, all these things you mentioned, there, there are definitely people who are like who are like that, like profiles and accounts that are that grew organically. There are content that has content that is relatable, but they are not as um, visible as all these other kinds that but, just pop yeah, up in our but, head. But you say that right, it, but it still takes a lot of effort to even you know be a pretty face. <laughs> it takes hours of of makeup. It takes okay, even if you talk about Photoshop, right? Photoshop is a skill. <laughs> It, it does I can appreciate the effort that goes behind each of these photos no matter how much Photoshop they use yeah, because I'm not, it takes I'm not it takes denying framing, the, it takes 
the effort and hard work that goes into mm. them making a nice photo or nice picture, but it doesn't just it just doesn't come across as honest as as what I see on YouTube or even like nowadays on podcasts. Mm. I I pops. think it also goes into the yeah you're, I, you're talking about the number of hours yes but I think the number of hours that it goes into making a video is way. Mm. And the effort that goes into making a video is it way surpasses most. I'm not saying all, but it surpasses most photos and captions on Instagram. There's so many things you have to take note while making a video, and the money that you spend making a video is a lot higher than doing a post. So you you gotta think about the amount of money companies put into sponsoring a video, and in some ways that also subconsciously or not, you know, it 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 kind of plays a part in your head. It's like okay, they're actually spending so much money to produce a video on the product itself means that I mean, are they, are they, they are quite successful to start with if, like, if they can engage someone that has a big following on YouTube versus paying someone on Instagram to post a picture and a caption which is yeah. a lot less and easier easier done yeah. and there's so much of that on Instagram already it's and not the, as and common and company could like, probably argue like the Instagram has more reach and it's cheaper at the same time you know I think one thing that <laughs> triggered me with this Instagram and YouTube Thing. I think it's probably my Should past few months like the past half year I had closer encounters with Instagram influencers are you going and to name and shame? no <laughs> 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 not, not these uh, not these okay, particular okay, okay. groups okay okay but you can kind of see like the behind the scenes and the lifestyle of it like it's literally just like companies sending them like items and they just post a review on their story and that's it and then they get paid a few hundred dollars well, like, I think if it's like you ask for the same amount from a YouTuber, that YouTuber has to do a lot more work for the same amount of money to do a video, to come up with like a script that's not too on the nose, to come up to it, put in the hours editing. Yeah, it takes a lot more work for a YouTube video compared to a Instagrammer. So I definitely would trust the YouTuber more. But, but I mean, and we say all that, right? And the, the world's youngest person to is who is approaching a billion dollars is is an instagrammer kylie jenner so i, I don't know i mean i appreciate her, her business like, like okay like even um kylie is the makeup one right yes yeah she it was found out that she faked a lot of her wealth yeah but she she is approaching one billion she's so not you, yeah so you see billion. that fakeness is already there mm. for that top one yeah. person one person and that, that's like fakeness is really there like fakeness is one thing right so what what, what do you think of, of of people who work so hard right but then they just cannot reach the certain number right and then they you know <laughs> they try to bend the tits, rules tits and ass no 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 not just, not just that I mean they, 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 they actually buy followers and things like that like really unethical stuff yeah that's just quite sad I, wo- I worked for a company who did that and I was like it's quite common, you know. It's more common than things, we think, yeah. I think. Yeah. Personally, I, I don't, I'm not very big on Instagram. Like, I don't really post on Instagram and I don't really follow a lot of influencers on Instagram. But because I, because I just feel like I am being manipulated in some way, the more I, I, I look, even if I just click my explore page, right? I end up spending sometimes like 30 to 40 minutes just browsing the explore page and then I realise that I'm just being baited into watching more of these things and looking at more of these things. It's either like tons of girls or like tons of random football videos or like like some sort of ads for shoes and, thing, and things like that. I mean, I feel like the platform, it, it really sucks the person in and, you, and, and of course this, this happens on many different platforms also but I think that on Instagram there's this level of, there's this feeling of cheapness that that turns me off <laughs> it just feels cheap it just feel it just feels so slipshod sometimes yeah and then the more you the more you you work with influencers and you you listen to what happens in the background and the things they talk about are how to get reach right and how to get how to get people talking about your stuff for me the more it turned me off i was just like wow this is such a it's like okay yeah I, i've won i've won um experience with that so I saw this um, person that was selling like an Instagram course on how to get more followers. Then they were selling is it, it for Imran? Like, is it Imran? <laughs> <laughs> no, it was some it was some chick from like from the States or something and they're like, just um get my course for only twenty dollars. And it's like, mm, okay. I just want I just bought it to see. And one of the one of her topics were, okay, so to get more followers, you go to your Hashtag that you like, go on the most recent and just like all these photos and then comment. Two comments per, per post. One comment you have to put just emojis 
another comment you just comment about something about their post so it could be their hair you have to make it all caps and like exclamation marks that's how you get followers and that's how you get engagement then my hair I'm like this is them this is dumb it's like quite you know it's like cheap you know it's like emojis and exclamation marks and caps that's 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 her tactic and that's how she sold like causes for like twenty dollars each and I'm one person who bought it okay. you are I mean, you, you bought it yeah I bought it <laughs> then, I bought it then I bought you it are the loser see. then you are, then you fell for it then you have to face the consequences maybe, maybe that's what, understand. is that what you've been doing with our Instagram page <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> you, you just comment fire fire then you just fire like, fire <laughs> <laughs> but you see Heart all shape. the popular pages right all the meme pages okay I do enjoy looking at memes on Instagram but then obviously there's a mix of memes and advertisements also yep. on the meme mm. pages right and when you look at the comments on the meme pages like the first 10-20 comments are all just people plugging their own pages or like random <laughs> comments of emojis yeah, yeah. yeah um, right? recently there was this um I think on one Singapore meme page, like there are these three accounts going around, like invest with um, whoever. So it's like oh, invest it? with this, invest with this, invest with this. They just comment on all these meme pages, like great posts. And these accounts like invest with Maria or something like that. It's, okay, then, then just to play place. the devil's advocate, right? Is it the fault? I mean, should all the blame go on the influencers? Or should companies or sponsors do their due diligence right and actually check before they enter into agreements with all these influencers at, at least okay you know bringing up this whole idea of buying f- uh, followers buying likes right if you simply just do as a as a brand right if you simply just do your job and look at their followers beforehand right then this whole thing wouldn't blow up you just don't 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 go with them lah. just go with another guy who another guy or girl who, who has actual followers what you you don't even have to employ an agency right to to find all this. You can just go and search yourself and see where these accounts are from, right? If they are Singaporean or if they are bots from somewhere, it's not that difficult, what? So it, yeah, I, I don't, don't know. We, the, we we are placing too much blame yeah. on the influencers. I feel. I I I hundred percent agree. I think the company should be the one doing research before they mm. engage, and that's that's what. It's before you engage anyone that to work for you, you do an interview with them, right? And then you find out whether they are good enough to work for you and find out more about them. So some of the complaints on the influ- the glass door were like, oh, this influencer, the re- they didn't get the reach that they promised. But you need to go and find out these things yourself also, right? And look at look at their audience, look at who are their followers. Are their followers mostly bots? Are their followers mostly male, female? All these right. things you can find out. You can also find out yourself, right? Yep. Before engaging the influencers and I do think the companies need to take more responsibility for it for sure but I also think that this comes from the the cheapness of the platform also oh my god <laughs> yeah again it, it, it's like, true no really it's you true. think about it like if you buy something from like Taobao or something like yeah. you 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 can't complain it it's a bad item like you yeah. buy something from um, Daiso compared to Muji or something like that the same item if the Daiso one for $2 doesn't work well you can't you can't blame like Daiso, you have to like kind of blame yourself. Is I chose this and yeah. I didn't do my due diligence to research on the product. So it's kind of the same thing, like you want I mean, you look for cheap stuff, you get cheap results. Uh. I was, because yeah, it's I was just, like hundred dollars here, two hundred dollars there, one post yeah, here, yeah. one post there. So it's true, just not true. really research that much and the effort that goes into research is not worth it sometimes. Just be like, okay, oh, let's just try let's just try this person. Let's just try this person. Based on number of followers, we think that she, he or she will charge around this much. Mm. Then we go and approach and see whether they want to do it. That's why so many times these influencers don't follow through as, yeah. we, as we see on the glass door. Yeah. But, okay, it's not simple. La. I mean, obviously there's time taken to like yeah. take the nice take nice photos and write the captions and everything. But it's the, the amount of effort compared to doing a whole video and, and, and stuff like that is very different. It's, yeah, it's like sometimes even one day, half a day's work compared to a week's work. I was just joking with a friend, right, regarding the whole um, drama with an affair with food and the F&B business uh, regarding, you know, supposed alleged fake followers and fake likes. Um, what if this whole thing, right, was a marketing genius plan by the brand agents, uh, the, by the F&B business to, to knowingly accept uh, uh, someone who she bot. thought bought followers and yeah. then blow up this whole drama so that everyone will be like oh let me try this business 
<laughs> I mean, it's a genius plan, lah. I thought. Yeah, yeah it could yeah, be. It then kudos like to them, man. That elaborate <laughs> uh, marketing plan. <laughs> <laughs> We should move on to the biggest news of the week, and it was just hap- it just blew up today. The, the start why, why of you, the week. Why don't you give a recap? I mean, um, they're clearly so our I number one podcast in the this, world. This relates in um to the podcast scene in Singapore. So the number one podcast in Singapore. Okay, let's go. Yep. Um, hosted by three DJs, former media corp DJs. If I'm not Ria wrong, and Warna. Yes, yeah. and and they are Malay speaking podcasts for most of your episodes. Generally, would, yeah. generally, yeah. Um, put into just putting out there, I only listen to like one episode from them, like Dikosh. Mm. Um, I'm not sure about the rest of you guys, but that's I listened to that one episode, and so recently, I mean, just today, like they got called. I think the past weekend, maybe they got called up for their sexist comments that they've been making throughout their whole podcast um, career. Objectifying women, um, commenting on their physical appearance rather than their inten- intelligence. And I think the whole thing sparked from having a minister come on their podcast. Multiple ministers, actually. Am- Amrin mm. came on, the law minister came on. So, yeah, it's actually multiple. And, and they have done events with other ministers during... Hari Raya events also, uh, just to make that clear. Right. So um, they definitely have have clout in the um, in in Singapore society. Yeah, among the Malay community at least lah. I mean, yeah. they, they they really covered that market. Yeah, I I personally never listened to them because I thought they were just a Malay speaking podcast, so I would understand. Um, but so they, I think the Kosh was the first one I listened to. Um, but yeah, they recently got a lot of um, heated feedback, negative feedback, and um, President Halima actually told them to apologize for these comments that they have made over the past, um, don't know how many episodes, I think up to 400 episodes. Like basically make them apologize for all these comments that they have made so far. Just to so, clarify, right, they actually made several apologies before that during the week mm-hmm. several yeah. but they were apologies. non-apologies non-apologies <laughs> yes. so the controversy sorry, came from sorry. Yeah. these non-apologies and then Instagram blew up with like, examples of people like actually um, emailing them messaging them about their comments calling them out and they kind of mostly brushed it off which is also seen from the continuously making these comments on their podcast um what else am I missing? Well, there's just just a lot to unpack. Maybe we'll just start with that, like these comments. Like, what what do you guys know about it or heard about it? I've only watched like I uh, sorry, I've only listened to the one with Kuma and the one that with Dikosh. Even in those two episodes, the way they were talking about women were it's something that <laughs> it's something that you think as guys we hear doing. I I think the I heard it the most when I was in NS. Yeah, like how guys just talk about the locker room talk and all these things uh. mm. personally like I'm not a fan of that like I mean I never found that funny but it it is apparent and it's definitely there in our society still right we we are striving towards a place a society where we don't have that and people get people understand the the repercussions of what they say so I one thing I read about them was when they were interviewing this uh trans lady and like midway through the interview, they, like she was talking about something else, and then th- the guy just said like, "Oh, I'm I'm sorry, I can't stop looking at your cleavage." You see, so that's that's like really, really just like randomly offensive and objectifying, right? And there are a few other examples like on in the articles where they were just being very blatantly objectifying with how they describe women. The reason why it reached this point is also because of how popular they are, right? They're number one in Singapore and they've got ministers on there. So once once ministers go on the podcast, then it becomes, if the minister is going on this, does that mean the minister is endorsing everything that this po- the podcast stands for? And then that's when the uproar, when there's a bigger uproar. I think it, it has to stem from the type of image they want to portray to the public, right? They all came from Mediacorp. They all had this like anti-Mediacorp, anti-establishment, attitude when they first started the podcast I think I mean this is when they were talking to Dikosh about it they were just saying like yeah man they all really hated Mediacorp and they all really hated the number of rules they had to adhere to in Mediacorp 
So they thought like starting this podcast, this non-mainstream podcast, they can just be themselves, they can say what they want. And of course, they keep referring to them to themselves as stage, as stage personas or their, maybe their amplified versions of themselves. And so like starting this podcast was like an outlet for them to just be as wild as they want to be. But then of course, with by being this wild amplified version of themselves, they gained popularity and they became number one in Singapore. So then it then it draws to the point where even that that President Haliman talked about when she posted like oh new influencers that have the ability to shape youth and the way the youth think they need to be very careful with how they portray things right. My question to that is if they became popular and they became number one by doing what they were doing before, then then how does that work? Does that are the people that support them do they also think that way because? they made them number one, right? People tuned in because they liked what they were hearing and then they made them number one, right? So is, is the problem is the problem then our society that, you know, we we normalize all these, uh, uh, the, the language, the, the language used to I, I think, women, I think definitely like that. that's a big, that's a big part of it. Like, like Vince said, like, I would say like the community definitely filled this, like the listeners because they wouldn't be in their position that they are without their listeners. And that's a fact. There's no disputing it. So these listeners, they like what um, Okay Let's Go is saying. That's why they listen to them. So I think that is when you are in that position, do you use that position for the betterment of your listeners? Even though that it may not be the most ideal way to get into that top position do you then use that position now for the betterment of your listeners especially when you have had feedback about your conduct or your comments that have been made because it's not like they receive no feedback or no pushback there have been feedback and pushback which we've seen like um, on social media people have been posting their correspondence with the, the group I think it's evident that they chose to ignore it that's why mm. they continued this whole thing and it came to a tipping point where people just couldn't take it anymore and then a backlash happened. I think if they probably like realized from all these negative comments they've had earlier that they should stop making these kind of comments, I think that this, this incident wouldn't have happened or wouldn't have happened mm. so badly. They wouldn't have been made to apologize publicly, especially mm. by the president. It's like, you cannot score by your mother... <laughs> Publicly, it's like a, a school caning in front of the whole country. Eh? I, I think I think we also have to point out, right, that that many of these listeners also do not share maybe some of these views. Um, because they, there were many accounts where the listeners said that whenever they they spoke about these kind of things or use this kind of language, they actually tuned off because they appreciate that the, they appreciated the other content that they did. Because make no mistake, right? Okay, let's go. Has done a lot for the community for the Malay community. They have invited guests who you know offer some 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 new perspective into something that maybe these people have never uh come across so so things like the the um you know they, they invited someone a sex worker they've invited um you know a former international drug dealer to offer all these like insightful mm. perspectives on on people and that that there, there, there was a sort of passiveness with many of the listeners where where they didn't feel the need to speak up because you don't like the content you don't listen no? so what I mean what what do you think about it yeah that's the problem right the being passive about it yeah because if let's say you really if if I I personally found a lot of things that they were saying in the Dikosh one very interesting with Kumar also yep. was very very interesting but yep. then if you if you say like oh, because of their sexist comments, would people totally stop listening? Some people would, but it seems that majority of people still continue to listen to them and just maybe, okay, let's say not everyone agreed with what they were saying. There were some people that disagreed, but they still continue to listen to them because of their groundbreaking content. Yep. Then that's the problem, right? If 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 you feel that strongly enough about something like that, then ideally you should just boycott the content and not give them views because if you totally agree with what they're saying disagree with what they're saying then don't listen to them and like make sure that try i mean do your part to not make them number one on, on, the, on the on the list because the more you listen to them the more they're going to be boosted up but people being passive about it and not saying anything about it until until now which i think will still boost their views because everyone's still talking about 
Okay, let's go, right? The Streisand effect. Yeah. <laughs> so, it, the, the, the problem is also within us as as the soci- as society, right? Like, we know that it's wrong, but we are still, like, listening to it. We're still, mm-hmm. like, brushing it aside and saying, but the content is still groundbreaking, right? Like, it's still interesting content. But aside from that, you know, it's still interesting. Yeah, yeah I think that we can no longer really be passive consumers of content, especially when content affects us and our community and has that kind of influence. It's like, like I was thinking of an example, like even in sports, like you see a team, they are a great team, but there are some kinks. There are some things that they should improve. There are things they are doing wrong. Do you let that, you let that happen? No, when you, you try to fix the problem, you try to plug the gaps, especially when you know what the gaps are and you have heard that people are telling you about it. So I, I see mm. this similarly to, to this whole situation. Like, um, You have that influence over people with the content you produce and mm. you have to have a responsibility to to do this community and this, your listeners right. Mm. Like, like, I think we can maybe talk about apology or so. When I first heard it, I was like, this is such a bullshit non-apology and mm. i mean I, I told you guys like i wish i wish they doubled down on their persona of being like um who they are and like being non-apologetic about it but then they gave some like half weird um non-apology they said like um, we are not mainstream media that's why we shouldn't like really be I think I think what they're trying to say is you're not mainstream media so we shouldn't be put under this kind of scrutiny yeah they say they are not perfect things like that yeah which then you improve or like they gave examples of um, towards the objectifying of women they give the examples of that they have wives they have daughters um, they invited marginalized uh, people females on the on the podcast they donated to different charities communities they did good in their community we sure those are all valid points but it's like you know you make a mistake but or you did something wrong that doesn't mean like all the things you've done before like should justify that. your makeup for it yeah 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 like i i kick someone like or like i punch someone out of anger that doesn't mean like I've donated to charity before or I did this before that that justifies that. Um, uh, I don't so, think they can say that especially with the position they are in. I, I think it brings up an interesting debate like, because can we accept that people are I mean they, they say that we are not perfect right? As as um stupid as it, it is for an apology we have to also recognize that no one is here is perfect and I, I think it's true they, they hold some truth to it because Thinking back, right, um, start of the year, Kobe Bryant died, right? And many people were saying that, why are we idolizing someone who allegedly raped someone? So we, we, we have to realize, right, that we, we accept people for all of their flaws and all of their, in, in entirety and all of their successes, right? Um, I, I don't think we should cancel them because, you know, because they made this mistake. Um, we have to accept that, yes, they made some misogynistic remarks and also accept that they have done done good. I think that's what they were trying to do or that's what I gathered, but of I, course it came out it came out quite flat. La. And not only that, like they, they posted a post on Facebook or something and then about the, an apology. And then on Instagram or social media, it surfaced like a screenshot of their group chat that it was their personal assistant that posted it and it wasn't their Not very views. good optics. They are just very <laughs> bad optics. <laughs> they should I hire mean, someone like, PR. Someone from PR. <laughs> Nigel, Nigel is available. Talk, talk, yeah. talk yourself. <laughs> <laughs> I can help you. You just help me translate. Your, this your post stuff. is sponsored by Nigel's PR agency. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, yeah, like that kind of, this kind of behavior, I mean, how you, you lost the trust of one listener here already. Mm. Like even yeah. though like, yeah, like people have said like I listened to it so I listened to that one episode with Dikosh I remember 10 minutes into the episode I was like this they're making kind of weird comments about women in, in their in their podcast and this is my first time listening to them I had no idea what their content was about I remember it was 10 minutes in because I was like 10 minutes into my run I kind of like knew where I was on the on my route and then but I still continued listening like because they were entertaining they were 
fun. They had a good guest on. So I continued listening. And I didn't think much of it until like this whole thing happened. And a lot of the people who say that their content is great, yeah, it's entertaining. It's um it's educational also at times. But you can't just like be passively like, oh, I don't like what they say, I just turn off la. Like what if, what if this happens in like real life? Like if you care about something or you're part of that community, you try to be active to engage them and tell them that this is not right. You shouldn't be saying these things. And I think being passive is is also a negative thing. And I think us as consumers of content as listeners should actually definitely be active into like engaging our creators or these influencers and telling them what we think and hopefully they do the right thing. Mm. I think like, yeah, I agree with that because they are, sing- they are a Singaporean podcast. Yes, they're number one, but I, they are not unreachable so it's it's like i still they're still within our network right if if it's not one person if it's 10 20 30 100 people 200 people saying the same things to them that has to have had an impact on them as in receiving similar comments from uh, from their fans right saying that i like i like your content but i feel the way you talk about women needs to be addressed and if they want to have a if they want to have an an, an argument what I would think is would be interesting is to get someone, get get a fan that found it offensive, or get someone who is articulate that found it offensive to come on their podcast and talk to them about it, and then have a have a have a debate of why they think they are right and why this fan thinks that the way they were objectifying women was wrong, yeah. and hopefully you can it can lead to something more ed- educational not only for them but for the people listening also who may have the same values as them. Like that, that would have been more uh, productive than just mm. you know than either not, they're not doing anything or being unapologetic or you know causing all this, just saying just causing people to say oh you must apologize and so what if they apologize like I I honestly don't think they've I don't know I I I can't speak for them but I feel like because of their many non apologies and then now they apologize it feels like they probably still think the same mm. yeah they probably got like. The president just came and twisted their arm, just pulled their ear, then they had to apologize. Yeah, like, just say sorry. Yeah, like, okay, fine, say sorry. Yeah. Then everyone's like, okay, they said sorry, now we can move on. Yeah, then and they I, have I, ended misogyny forever. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't know, yeah. as a community, should they be let off the hook so easily? Like, I mean, it's not like a one time thing. So, uh, do I don't think they do? should. I mean, what I think they should do? have a conversation with someone. If, they, if yeah. they're so open to it, right? If they keep saying this in their apology, saying that, oh, we are so progressive, we have, all, we have this, people, this person, that person, and we have done all these things, then like, okay, how, why not have someone, have one or two people come in that, uh, that may, be, may be activists or maybe some people that feel very strongly about these things or, or echo the voice of the people who are offended, come in and have a conversation with them. Yeah, and on our next episode, <laughs> <laughs> okay, we yes. invite. Okay, let's go to come and have a conversation with us. <laughs> yeah, okay, let's go. But then I mean, the, oh, the yeah. people will say like, "Oh, no, now look, it's six guys talking about it." Oh, yeah, where, yeah. Where the, where's the female voice? Let's just preface this. Uh, this late <laughs> preface that we are just three guys. <laughs> there are no, there are no females here. We're just three guys, stupid guys. We're just talking about it. Uh, yeah. I mean, yeah, yeah. So, just to play the devil's advocate, right? Can we at least support? their ability to say these things to create this content yes we do not condone their content we do not condone their language um, but at least in in a progressive society don't we want to see that we can allow our lis- uh, we can allow Singapore's listeners to be discerning enough to know what's right and wrong and not just say no you cannot say that must must the government play that role I, I feel like they should be allowed to make whatever content they, they want to make but mm-hmm. then also, by doing that, be able to argue it against someone who disagrees. You have to be and held ac- To prove their point. Yeah. Like, you can make whatever you want. Just be prepared for a certain amount of backlash if, or negativity if it's not great or it offends people. Mm. I think that's the main thing. Like, people think they can just say whatever they want and get away with it. Like, mm. I, I don't think that will happen in this day and age. I think that happens in radio, maybe, like, like because someone censors it for you, um, but okay. But don't you think it's hypocritical, right? When you see things on Netflix, for example, which is way way more sexist, way way more violent, you know, why why is that acceptable? Why do you consume that and not say okay, not just not consume that? Why why do you not 
protest against that. For example, I'll bring out the example, okay? The popularity of Korean dramas, right? We know how male chauvinistic centric their dramas are, right? But we cannot stop consuming it. One recent show also, um, this Polish drama about 365 Days DNI. It's, I, I, took a, I took a glimpse at it because I was a bit interested. It, it, it hit number one in Singapore. In a very sh- uh, in within like a day of opening, right? And then I watched it, right? Because they called it the f- the Polish Fifty Shades, and it's the most sexist content. the The plot, the entire plot, right, revolves around this person kidnapping the 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 lady and giving himself three hundred sixty five days for the lady to fall in love with him. I mean, how 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 crazy is that, right? And we are okay with that. We didn't say anything, no. What's the show called? Uh, three hundred sixty-five DNI. It's a it's a new Someone, show on Netflix. Someone's interested. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's way the this. entire plot right is so sexist. Yeah, but we're okay with that, and and suddenly, we hold our local content creators to a higher standard. I mean, just throwing it out there. I don't condone whatever. Okay, let's go see it. But you know why 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 do we do that? I'm not sure about Korean dramas because I don't watch them. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and uh. <laughs> With these shows that there are there are dramas and mm. I think it's a it's a bit different when you when it's, it's like people are talking fiction. about yeah yeah when people oh, are talking about okay yeah. don't okay don't even talk about dramas we we talk about podcasts that that we that we that we yeah. subscribe to okay Joe Rogan for example yeah. he's the most sexist fuck <laughs> okay <laughs> that, that that I listen to like even the, you you talked about it how how in the most recent podcast with Bill Burr he talks about women right so so yeah. why is that okay you see i don't think it's okay i feel like joe rogan like he has he he, he sways a bit like sometimes he's really like he says some of these sexist things and then sometimes mm. he's like totally the opposite like mm. it's it, i think it matters like who he's talking to sometimes like depending on his guest or so like he the way he was talking about it with the one with uh, on bill burr right it was yeah. also semi like joking in a way like it's like look at how ridiculous this what I'm saying is I think he does get called out yeah like, yeah, he but, does get called but out. just not by us it's by just his, his market is too segmented <laughs> that's why yeah it's I mean it's kind of like a, a pebble in the sea you know if, if yeah. someone calls him out true true and I think you look at his um community or his like um online community people do call him out and he's known as like people call him a chimpanzee, a gorilla for for saying all these things. He offended so many people with his like, especially in politics. He gets like vilified so much. But I think part, I think part of the reason why we don't care as much is because it's so far removed from our world. Yeah, and True. you never know. Like there are podcasters in in the states that are talking about Joe Rogan and his sexist comments. There are, um, there def- definitely yeah, are. There definitely There's are. A lot of people yep. talking about that, people talking about him being right-wing. And then, but he addresses this a lot of times in his podcast. Mm. And he addre- and he invites people to come in that have com- that have different points of views and then yeah. he talks to them. That's what I, I respect about him is that he's open to talking to anyone about it. And when we were discussing his interview style, right, his interview style has changed over the years. So he, he yeah. is learning as he's going. And I mean, it's definitely... <laughs> He, he was the cheap very different. <laughs> he was very different. Like if you listen to his old stuff, like was two, he like us? <laughs> I like to think yeah. he was like us. <laughs> he was us. Yeah. It, um, yeah. It's uh, so he. I mean, he definitely invites people with different different points of views to have a conversation with him, also, and then they have a debate or whatever it is. But he can't. He knows he can't please everyone, and <laughs> he knows that he also wants to be himself. Yeah. And there's nothing wrong with being yourself. Just yeah. be open to talking to people about it. Yeah, and you know what? So so let's so this whole thing with like the okay, let's go right. If this yeah. if that was themselves, if that was who they are, right? Then you know if if that's what they really believe in, then stick to that, and then invite someone in to talk about it. Yeah, if they really believe that, and then if someone can really change that foundation of their beliefs and, and highlight to them why saying these things are wrong, and make them try to think of, think about it in a slightly different way instead of just brushing it aside now and because they apologize, because right. now I think it's even it's it's like a weird like. Elephant in the room, right? It's gonna be like, uh, it's they'll not probably really come, they'll probably come out and say, like, "Oh, we can't say that because we'll get cancelled." Then they will they, laugh about it. That that like, whole mindset will come into play. Yeah, it changes yeah. nothing. It's just sense. They're self censoring. I I have no like gripe against the content that they produce, the personality they have. I think Singapore needs this kind of alternative voices, 
these things that dare to challenge thinking or like perceptions, which I hope is, they will, but it's just that there's a different way to go about it and mm. that they kind of like stop being so like non-apologetic about it. Because if you want to do it, just, just double down and be who you are. Not blame it on like stage persona. But did they really like, have a choice? I, I don't think they did. Eh? I mean, they were really forced in their corner. No matter what their views are, right? I think they were had they had to apologize, but maybe they had to apologize earlier, or like like Vince said to to have someone on to talk about it. I think that would have been the best, like actually. That that's how you grow, right? As a society, we don't you don't want to have a nanny state where where everyone just you know where the government tells you what is the good content and what is bad, then you just fo- follow like a sheep, ah. So so should, so I pose this question to you: Should free speech exist? Like what we do. Should, I don't think that's should we self center. Okay. Why? <laughs> oh, <that's very> <laughs> well, okay. I think in any you, you look at let's look at Twitter as an example of yep. a platform that was made for you to just tell, in hundred and forty characters tell the world what you're doing. Right. Yep. And then now it's evolved into this thing where people are coming up with political ideas and having debates on it and it's the the number one place that news gets released first and stuff like that and you get people getting banned from twitter now because they say certain things that don't go in line with twitter's policies so who sets the twitter policies eventually like if you say if you talk about free speech meaning it means anyone can say anything right but that's not the case because someone says something that offends a lot of people or some people and then someone has to determine has to take the higher ground to determine whether what that person said is right or wrong and what the action is they need to do. So Twitter has taken the action to block people and block their accounts because they said things that were transphobic or homophobic. There was the whole issue with the rapper who got blocked because he responded to a trans person with, okay, dude. Uh, And because he used the word dude, he was blocked and then he appealed and then Twitter upheld it. So that's uh, that's the problem because you have you no matter what platform you have for free speech there will always be things labeled as hate speech after a while and then mm-hmm. someone needs to come in and censor it and, and then the I mean depending on the because Twitter is owned by people in California which is like mostly liberal right yep. so then whoever owns the thing whoever you you kind of have the ideals of people who owning the thing that would determine what goes on the platform so I don't think that there's such thing as completely free speech because eventually it would have to be come under some scrutiny of being censored I, I mean or, yeah I was yeah. speaking to, to my friend Mark about it and he raised a good point like then because you already have gatekeepers right and gatekeepers only allow certain certain publications certain mainstream media in uh, you already have SPH you already have Mediacorp right you need all these alternative channels and then what, what what's gonna happen next? You you're gonna you're gonna require everyone to just register their content? Like is it is that is I that mean, there the is, society there, that you want to live in? There is content policy on like all these podcasting platforms mm. um already set in place. So it's not like anyone can say anything they 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 want. They cannot incite riots on their podcasts and things like that. Um we're always being watched or listened to. You but said like the Apple when you when we upload it on Apple, they watch. I mean, they listen to the whole thing, right? Yeah, before yeah. Even like our podcast, like they probably listen to our rambling. <laughs> thanks, thanks to Apple. Thanks, thanks for listening. Shout out. <laughs> um, but yeah, I agree. There's definitely needs to have alternative voices and things that challenge that go against the grain. Um, but just know that whatever you are, you will say that challenges people, challenges thinking. There will be a backlash, and you just have to get ready to. Um, prove your point. Then does this mean, right, the bigger that we get, right, then we have to kowtow <laughs> more to the government? <laughs> yeah, look at every YouTube channel. In the end, they kowtow to the government, right? So, yeah, then, then I don't know. That's, that's in, the very, end we are, we, in the end, we want to... to that's very sad, a, right? To friend with Akong. But you see, I mean, it, it yeah. always starts off as your own project and your your own doing of something and you do yeah. it for yourself. And then hmm. if once you get a number of listeners like tuning in, yeah. then you naturally have more influencing power and with right. that influencing power comes that responsibility that we have to put on ourselves to determine whether what we put out to people reflects 
the best values that we want to put out. I don't know whether it reflects our values. And then, then again, what the, what do our values reflect the best values that society yeah, needs? Correct, yeah, correct. Which is, I mean, which is we, so messed up after a while. Cause we clearly you, have construct, uh, contrasting views then the government is to you know c- certain issues. What I mean, we we have talked about it. Then do we do we do we change our views? Do we s- self censor? I I don't know. Is a question to ask ourselves. Well, I think we, yeah. to be fair, it wasn't the government that so much censored the podcast. Mm. It was kind of like a mob of angry people that did that forced like the president's hand to do it. I uh, I I don't think a government actually could step into like Spotify and tell them don't play, don't let them play this. I don't think that would be possible anyway. So mm. that platform will still be there. Mm. Um, it's just whether how society censors the producer rather than the like the content platform. Well, the yeah. the government has done that in the past, but maybe we won't go into that. Yeah, <laughs> I think another hour. It's another yeah, hour. Yeah. This is censorship topic. Let's, let's just agree, like, When we hit seventy five thousand <laughs> downloads, we quit. <laughs> we quit. <laughs> we we reach the pinnacle and we quit. Okay, so guys, if you don't like us, right, keep listening to us, so we will quit faster. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's the plan. Um, I don't know, any any lasting thoughts? Any last thoughts? No, I think there's definitely a lot to think about. And it's something that I don't think there's, there'll be an answer to, clear mm. answer to, with regards to free speech and how we express ourselves. Uh, but I do think there's always uh, an articulate, calculated way to express mm. an opinion. Mm. And there's, there's <clears throat> definitely room for discussion when it comes to differing points of views. Uh, and I would really like to see someone talk to, okay, let's go. Yeah. If if not us, some someone else. Yeah, someone <laughs> someone stand up for us. <laughs> we, we are not that articulate, sorry. <laughs> I'm I'm just interested to see how things go from now, from here. Um I think mm. this was set kind of precedence on the way podcasters behave. Um yeah, so we shall see. Okay, let's go are the trailblazers for us. And let's move on to phase two. <laughs> <laughs> Just recently announced How do you guys uh, feel? Two hours ago I, I feel it is a long time coming But I'm also a bit like Is this too early? Because <laughs> it's literally been 14 Everyone's days Everyone's a bit sceptical It's been 14 days And you know normally the, the incubation period is 14 days So you know the next few days if the, I mean the communicated The community cases There were a slight increase The past few days mm. So I don't know Maybe in the next five days Well in four days time Everything's going to be reopened right? Yeah. yeah I think the government Kind of acknowledged that coronavirus will always be there it's just whether yeah. our healthcare system can handle it if there were clusters that come up so I think when they thought that the healthcare system could handle it they eased it back a bit more I guess people are just feeling like they just come out of a cave and there's a lot of sunlight and they feel like there's too much sunlight so they go back in the cave a bit more yeah I wouldn't go out they, so soon they get like, acclimatized to it yeah but, you must slowly you must Test the water first. Yeah. Put like, <laughs> take two steps out first. Touch, touch, then come back. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> See what happens. Well, Actually, I booked, I, I booked my first yeah. haircut in two Whoa. and a half months or uh, for Thursday in preparation for Friday. Wow. Because I'm not gonna, I'm not sure what's gonna happen on Friday, but <laughs> I'm gonna run to your house. <laughs> oh yeah, hello. Hey, eat McDonald's breakfast. Yeah. <laughs> haircut already can do for two and a half weeks. Already. What yeah, are you doing now? I I don't want to go out so far. <laughs> <laughs> what what else is open? I didn't really. Really Gyms are going to be reopened, mm. which is interesting because are we supposed to wear masks in gyms? I can't, I can't do it. Um, what else? Um, F&B the establishments. Has, yeah. I think that's the biggest shitty. one. The government issued masks are quite shitty. This, this is, let me just hey, read it out there. Hey, don't say things. It will get cancelled. <laughs> get cancelled when we have 75 downloads. <laughs> everything, yeah. I think everything is open except for movies. Clubs, uh, clubs, bars, places of worship. Wait, can you sit out in the open in a park? Yeah. Can you do a picnic? Oh, okay. Yeah, up to why, five people. Why, why would you want to have a picnic? I don't know. It's, it feels very nice. In Singapore. The past few days. No man has been raining every day. I have some pims. No, after the pims. rain. After the rain is okay. What? Pims. Then the grass <laughs> will be wet. <laughs> sit on the fucking bench, lah. Hey, you in different, different grass, right? country, are you? <laughs> Have P- some pins and, and watch Wimbledon. Watch <laughs> 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 Oh, 
I, I think I'm happy for the businesses, the F and V businesses. Mm. I think they struggled. One of the worst hits one, worst hit ones. Um, like the list have been published, like circulating around that. Um, don't know how many F and B outlets have been closed. Were closed because of the virus, and it's quite sad, uh, Because like for me, like I've experienced in F and B, and there's a lot of hard work and time then going to building something up, and having it shut from. Mm circumstances you have no control over is, is the worst thing so i'm glad that these businesses uh, can open again what's the first business you're gonna go to once it's open not mcdonald's dude that's the first thing that came to my head <laughs> <laughs> apart from mcdonald's don't be basic please <laughs> definitely not those like bakeries or cafes i think they were making bank um it's the more of the smaller places just by amiro buying their stuff right yeah, yeah two hundred dollars yeah. going a week on bread he's made his rounds already supporting i think we businesses. need we need to have an intervention one day no amiro is our trump card bakeries will sponsor our podcast just oh, to have him on to talk about oh, them yeah so Shout he's out, our influencer we'll intervene and ask him to spend four hundred dollars instead of two hundred dollars yeah. okay 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 <laughs> good idea good idea his handle is cake man 9,000. Get it? 9,000. Yeah. So yes. guys, look him up. Um, give yes. him a follow. He's our cash cow. <laughs> <laughs> if you're interested in bread and all things yeast, yeah. check follow. out Cake Man 9,000. We have Cake Man 9,000. We have Killer Nige. Killer Nige. Should I change my Instagram handle? Yeah, sure. Yeah. Okay, okay. Oh, okay. You should double down on the hype man persona. And spell it like K-I-L-L-A-H. Like Killer. Oh my god. Killer Nige. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, I'm gonna lose so much respect, but okay, let's do it. Come on, man! Instagram. Well, more than okay, the, let's it's go. The, it's the yeah. cheapness. It's the cheap. Yeah. <laughs> After spending one plus hour <laughs> shitting cheap on, social on the cheapness of Instagram, we are sellouts. We're doubling down. <laughs> Fuck it, we are sellouts. <laughs> Please follow us on Instagram. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, Let's please. See. In the meantime, please follow us on YouTube, Facebook, uh, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, uh, Instagram, of course. And um, <laughs> did I miss anything out? And Stitcher, yeah. I don't yeah, know. Don't if forget Stitcher. Yeah, okay, don't forget. <laughs> <laughs> shout out to Stitcher. We don't even know if we have a single <laughs> view on Stitcher, but shout out, nonetheless. No. <laughs> yeah, and please follow us. We have uh, currently about thirty plus followers on Instagram. Please, please add us. Uh, yes, thirty plus 40. followers on Instagram. We have eight followers on Spotify. Wow! Did you know you can even follow on Spotify? Yeah, please do. Please do. <laughs> Apparently, our most listen so our listeners, the artists yeah. that our listeners listen to most, yeah. is Lady Gaga. Shout wow. out Lady Gaga! Yeah, wow. All the female followers and all the gays and and guys who like Lady Gaga as well. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> love you all. Love you all. It's definitely okay. three of us then, right? Le- definitely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I do love. <laughs> Lady basically, Gaga, only right? listen to Lady Gaga. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Follow us on Puckish Podcast. Is P U C K I S H. That's Puckish Podcast. Thank you. Oh, guys. How do you spell podcast? A P P O D C A S T. <laughs> I took a while, man. Yeah. Yeah, that was yeah, a that test was too and long. you failed. That was too long. That was too long. Okay, thank you, thank okay, you for listening. Bye, bye. Bye.